I think the inequality and risk are actually very closely related. In this current recession, we've seen that growing inequality with the very top pulling away from the rest of society has been closely associated with uh, increased risks in the financial markets. Um, and there's been some additional research and thinking about this over the last few years that has shown that there probably is a connection, that when you have very large gains at the top that you get a lot of money sloshing around um, that is used for speculative financial transactions. And at the same time, uh, because that growth in income at the top wasn't associated with really strong growth in income in the middle, um, which is one of the reasons why I view it as a big concern, you also saw a lot of extension of, of credit to middle class Americans over this period, particularly in the housing market. And so those two came together in this sort of perfect financial storm uh, in the, uh, in the uh, late 2000s. And I think we're living with both a new reality of risk, that is people out of work, and we're facing up to some pretty serious inequalities. I think that uh, Americans are more concerned with injustice than inequality. Right now, um, Deng Xiaoping, not right now, he <laughs> once said, uh, when asked about inequality in China, he said, well, somebody has to get rich first. Right. So in the transition that we see in China today, there's a lot of inequality, but it's not so much a setback for the rest of China. The rest of China is growing too. The problem is that there is a sense, uh, at least in this country, uh, and maybe in China too, among many people, but in this country, that it was gotten unfairly. In Winner Take All Politics, my co-author Paul Pearson and I calculate that about 40% of all of the after-tax, after-government income gains experienced between 1979 and 2007 went to the richest 1% of households, um, which was more than the bottom 90% combined received over this period. So that's, that's, clearly a, um, that's clearly suggestive that over that period, in the United States at least, um, growing inequality was really bad for the middle class. I think we should all understand that there are enormous basic investments that a society makes. And they're not just government investments, they're investments we make in each other through communities and through families that, um, that are, are essentially um, uh, public goods, right, that need to be financed. Um, and so how do we have a more entrepreneurial economy going forward? Well, part of it is making sure that we have, you know, kids who are going uh, to college, that we have good math and science education. Having a society that has the kind of basic investment in research and education and infrastructure and yeah. good energy models is, is, a, is a huge benefit for everyone. I, I'm thinking about why do people oppose what you have said is just the a logical thing. The government should be worrying about public goods and infrastructure and education and all these important things, and yet the people want to dismantle that, they want to move back. Uh, and uh, I think there's a, uh, a, a deep reaction to historical experience that they can't completely figure out, but th it, in their mind has been connected up with big government. To me, the, the, the big concern and, and, and where I would focus a, a attention going forward is, is the sense that the political people have that politics isn't working. If you, if you look at the challenges we face, you know, the solutions to many of them run through American politics, but that's a very rocky road right now. The most difficult aspect of talking about risk and inequality in the current context is the immediate assumption, sometimes correct, that those discussions are going to lead to talking about a greater or um, different role for government going forward. And government is, is the most contentious, the role of government is the most contentious issue in American society. It's been that way really since the founding. Financial theory is about risk management, yeah. and risk management ought to reduce inequality. <laughs> That's the idea, right? If you minimize risk, then the random shocks that affect people differently will, you'll pool the risk and the random shocks will go down. And the, the history of uh, risk management has been unfolding over centuries. I'm particularly interested in risk management tools that democratize risk management, that bring it to the uh, ordinary risks that, that everyone faces, like the risk of a family member dying, and that's a huge financial risk for a family. We have life insurance, and the government has stepped in with, di with uh, survivor's insurance and disability insurance. These are really important, and 
they, we didn't have them hundreds of years ago. But we still have a lot of risks that remain. And I, I think that in the next, I, I've seen this progress toward better risk management unfolding over centuries. I think that the next century we'll see progress. Uh, we could first of all have home insurance against home price declines. We could have new kinds of mortgages that protect homeowners against that kind of exigency, which is not their fault at all if home prices decline. We could have insurance against occupational income shifts. Uh, and so th these would be things that protect people against things that keep them up at night now.